All right, everyone, uh, we're into the afternoon here on day two, uh, and it's been a big day for uranium. And uh, people kind of fell asleep there in the summer, but we're back. And uh, like I've said to every uranium you know, producer and, and company, every tech company has a uranium nuclear story. And uh, if that's not a hint as to this renaissance happening, I don't know what is. We get a chance here to speak with the CEO of ATHA Energy, Tro Troy Bougelet. It's been about four or five months since we've yeah. spoken to you. Uh, and I mean, you've got a lot of pro projects, a large land package, yeah. but lots of culmination of things to come here very soon. So tell us what's been going on. Yeah. Hey, we've continued on our aggressive growth platform. Okay. Uh, you know, over the last 12 months, we have completely transformed the company, went from three and a half million acres exploration property to eight and a half million acres, added uh, a 43 million pound deposit. Over the course of the summer, we had a 10,000 meter, 25 drill hole program at Angulac. The whole intention there was expansion. Yeah. Okay. We didn't do one infill drill hole. It was all expansion, expanding the envelope of mineralization, de-risking the next phase, which is resource growth. Um, it was highly successful. Every one of the holes were mineralized. Uh, where we're at right now is we're actually just waiting on assay results to come back, expect them within the next kind of three to five weeks, call it in that, in that window. So we're excited about that across the board. Then we, we've been working, um, at our Gemini project, yeah. new discovery on the Eastern edge of the Athabasca basin. We're actively drilling there right now uh, so results could come off the drill you know with success right um, then in turn from there we've been building up the largest pipeline of exploration targets within the uranium space based off the largest land position in what i consider the best uranium jurisdictions in the world yes and it's i mean it's a lot of work because you've got a large land package yeah. three different zones uh and three i would say major projects but also a joint venture project with next gen and iso energy there's a lot going yeah, on with you guys. Yeah, yeah, there is. Um, there, there, but that's an, it's intentional. Yes. Okay, and it, it's very intentional. It's intentional growth. It's it, it's uh, aggressive growth that, leading into you you know off of your intro, is directly aligned uh, with the macro sentiment in the uranium space. Yes. The, you know I've been in the uranium business a long time, uh, and this is by far the best uranium market we've ever seen. Yeah. Okay. From a fundamental perspective, from a demand perspective, the risk is now on you know on the supply side. Right, supply scare, you know, uncertainty. Uh, it, the, the fundamentals have never been better. And so, with our strategy, our strategy is directly aligned to that macro environment. And we're being, you know, very aggressive in our growth approach uh, because of that. And it's so important to say for Canada, which I mean, it's very well known for Athabasca. I mean, you've got other regions as well, yeah. as well, uh, Labrador and none, none of it. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to throw a curveball here because you see, like in Kazakhstan, they've committed 50% of their uranium to China. So this is kind of, we've probably talked about it before. This is interesting. There's a division now between East and West. And it's like, well, where's the rest of this going to be filled? Yeah. It, it, and it's it's not just Kazakhstan, right? Um, you, you look at this, a bifurcated uranium market. We've been talking about this now for a while. It's coming to fruition, right? You're seeing Kazakh production being shelved and into the Eastern world. Um, Geopolitical risk. You know, you, you, you look at uh, what's happened in Niger over the last, you know, 18 months, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and that just lit has us leaning into our focus with our North American centric approach, right? Predominantly in safe, stable jurisdictions coming out of the Athabasca Basin, the Thelon Basin, which is directly analogous to the Athabasca. The only difference is it hasn't seen the amount of exploration effort that the Athabasca has seen since the 1970s. Okay. Yes. And so the opportunity for tier one greenfields discoveries in the Thelon with a 3 million acre land package ha has us in a very favorable position. Yes. And that's what we love to see the, the aggressive expansion. You've got the, the cash flow to do it. Uh, yeah. So that's there. And also to meet the needs. I mean, this is happening, uh, even though one could argue the stock market in the uranium pulled back a little bit, the amount of work that every you know, uranium explorer, producer, it doesn't matter whether you're a Cameco, and then of course, if you've got any SMR, you're, 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 or your Three Mile Island with, yeah, with Microsoft, yeah. there's so much happening at breakneck speeds. Yeah. Yeah, and, and for us, you know, that really wraps into our capital market strategy, okay? Um, 
you know, we're, we're an at scale company, you know, we're, t today we're plus or minus $200 million in terms of our market cap. Yeah. Um, we have a very strong balance sheet and, and that remains a focus moving forward. What that allows us to do is continue to be aggressive in what we know and understand as being short term quarterly pullbacks in the equity markets, right? Yes. Allows yeah. us to execute, allows us to continue to execute on our vision and on our strategy over the longer term and withstand a bit of short term volatility um, and come out of it in a position now, you know, we're, we're, we continue to execute on a $30 million exploration budget over the course of the summer. We're still executing on that right now. As a function of that, the catalyst now that we have built up and the news flow that we have built up into the back half of this year, into the you know fourth quarter, as this uranium market is on, has us in a very good position. That is exciting. If we always want to know, you know, what's some catalyst for someone, what's the interest that, that even mom and pa should be focused on uranium again? And it's, they're, they're getting reminded quickly. Yeah, exactly. And, and now you're saying as well, we're going to have results. So that's something yeah. that's a catalyst for the, your stock in particular. You've done a lot of work up until this point to put it all together, yeah. hit, hit these targets, and we're going to get some some real feedback here very soon. Yeah, exactly. So expect us, hey, to continue o over year one. Okay, we, we've completely transitioned our profile as a company. Yeah. It, expect us to continue to aggressively pursue growth in in the assets that we've acquired, um, and you know, in, the, in uh, across the board. You know, we have a growth strategy that we have executed on, and we'll continue to execute on in line uh, with this uranium macro environment. Excellent. Well, we're going to keep an eye out for those release, those uh, assay releases soon. And uh, yeah, very impressive the size and scope of what you're doing, and uh, it's. It's exciting to be involved in this this new renaissance or second renaissance of nuclear. Uh, it certainly is happening and there's a, a way for people to get involved and that is to look at companies that you like with management teams that are executing on scale, yeah. which is what's so exciting. Yeah, yeah we're excited. Excellent. Well, thanks so much, Troy. Thank you Great very much. Great to talk to you. Appreciate Take it. Care. Take care.